the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, no pope in the history of the church has spoken so often about Mary's regal power as Pope Pius XII. From the beginning of his pontificate, Pope Pius XII taught her queenly association with Christ the King. He later published an encyclical letter on the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary on October 11, 1954. In this document, the Pope declared that the royal dignity of our Blessed Mother has been held by Catholics since the early days of Christianity. This has been proven by ancient Christian documents, by works of religious art, by the prayers of the sacred liturgy, and by the innate piety of Catholics. Sacred scripture, tradition, and the teachings of theology also confirm this truth. In order to annually celebrate Our Lady's queenship, In the liturgy, Pope Pius XII instituted a new feast day in her honor. He said, We decree and establish the Feast of Mary's Queenship, which is to be celebrated every year in the whole world on the 31st of May. We likewise ordain that on the same day the consecration of the human race to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary be renewed, cherishing the hope that through such consecration a new era may begin joyous in Christian peace and in the triumph of religion. Throughout her sinless and virtuous life, Mary practiced the most profound humility. Christ declared, everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Therefore, the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a fitting reward for her lifelong humility, charity, fidelity, and conformity to the will of God. When speaking of the happiness of heaven, St. Paul has written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what things God has prepared for those who love him. My dear and beloved in Christ, we can only imagine what glory and happiness has been prepared for the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the beloved daughter of the Eternal Father, the Admirable Mother, the Son of God, and the Faithful Spouse of the Holy Ghost. In addition to the glorious privilege of her divine maternity, our Heavenly Queen freely and totally cooperated with God, thereby amassing a supereminent degree of sanctifying grace within her immaculate soul. Herein lies Mary's greatness. The Church sings, She has been exalted above all the choirs of angels so that there is no throne higher than hers except the throne of God himself. She is a hierarchy by herself, and indeed the greatest, the most sublime of all, the one who for the whole of eternity gives God the greatest glory. My dear and beloved in Christ, on May 13, 1946, the occasion of the coronation of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima, Pope Pius XII stated, Paradise recognized that the Blessed Virgin Mary was really worthy of receiving honor, glory, and rule because she is full of grace, holier, more beautiful, more exalted, incomparably more so than the greatest of saints and angels taken individually or all together. Mary has a right to the title of queen both as mother of Christ the King and due to her association with him in the work of our redemption. Our remaining subject to God, she is, since she is essentially a creature whose glory comes from him, yet she shares in his regal status. Therefore, after her assumption into heaven, Our Lady received the threefold crown of power, love, and wisdom from the Blessed Trinity. St. Bernardine of Siena said that as many creatures as there are who serve God, so many they are who serve Mary. For as angels and men and all things that are in heaven and earth are subject to the empire of God, so they are also under the dominion of Mary. She is the empress of the world whose power rules in heaven, extends over the whole earth, and reaches to the bottom of the abyss. She commands the angels is respected and obeyed by nature and by the elements is venerated and I'm sorry is respected and obeyed by nature and by the elements 
is venerated by angels and men, is formidable and terrible to the demons. This is confirmed by Pope Pius XII. Her kingdom is as vast as that of her divine son because nothing of his dominion is excluded. For this reason, the church salutes her as queen of angels and the saints, of patriarchs and prophets, of apostles and martyrs, of confessors and virgins. For this reason, the church acclaims her queen of heaven and of earth. From the very beginning, God made Mary the mighty adversary of Satan when he declared that the woman would crush his head. This enmity between the Virgin Mary and Satan is described by St. Louis Marie de Montfort. The most terrible of all the enemies which God has set up against the devil is his holy mother Mary. Satan, being proud, is embarrassed by being beaten and punished by a little and humble handmaid of God. And her humility humbles him more than the divine power. God has given Mary such power against the devils that they fear one of her sighs for his soul more than the prayers of all the saints and one of her threats against them more than all other torments. The power of Mary extends into hell, the bottomless pit. There she exercises powerful dominion over the princes of darkness and the most proud monarch of the damned, Satan. Oh, how terrible she is to them, says St. Bonaventure. She is the most strong lady whom even from the first God himself foretold she should crush the head of the serpent, Satan. She has crushed and continues to crush his head. And howsoever much he may rage and storm, he is oppressed, bound, and crushed under the most strong foot of Mary. St. Bernard of, Deanna, of Siena says, Crushed and trodden under the feet of Mary, he suffers a miserable slavery. At the name of Mary, says Thomas a. Kempis, demons are prostrated as by a thunderbolt from heaven. The evil spirits fear the queen of heaven and fly at the sound of her name as from fire. At the invocation of her name, they leave the soul which they have held secure in their clutches as a hawk drops its prey when struck by a fatal shot as Mary herself has revealed to her servant, St. Bridget. My dear and beloved in Christ, St. Bonaventure says that the devils fly from her face as wax melts before the fire. When they hear her name, they tremble, and many are the victories of those servants of Mary have gained by the mere invocation of her holy name. Just repeating, Mary, Mary, Mary is a prayer. Thus, St. Anthony of Padua, Blessed Henry Suso, and thousands and thousands of others have put them to flight. Many devils appeared in the form of wild beasts to a newly converted Catholic in Japan and tried to frighten him. But he, unmoved, bade them do their worst as far as they were permitted by God. I have no arms, he said, to defend me from your fury. My only protection is the sweet names of Jesus and Mary. But scarce had he pronounced these powerful names when the earth opened and swallowed up the beast before his eyes. The sight of the largest army does not cause such great fear to a small band of troops as does the name and patronage of Mary to the infernal powers. Blessed Alan has written, Satan flies and hell trembles when I say, Hail Mary. My dear and beloved in Christ, the more fully Mary reigns as queen in a soul, the more does Jesus reign there as king. She exercises her dominion principally over the minds, hearts, and wills of her subjects. When we allow her to rule over our minds, she helps them better understand the teachings of Christ and his church. When she rules over our hearts, we put God first in our lives.
Nothing else is allowed to become more important to us than our relationship with Almighty God. When Our Lady truly rules over our wills, she gently inclines them to obey all the commandments. Despite the pressure of peers, the snares of the devil, and the allurements of the world. Our Lady's dominion extends even to our bodies, for she teaches us to subject our members to the law of God, to the practice of the virtues of temperance, modesty, and chastity. When we choose to obey God's laws, we master our passions and do not become enslaved to sinful pleasure. Thus, Jacinto Fatima stated, God has entrusted the peace of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God gives us his graces through her. We should run to Mary at all times and in all our needs. In closing, in dangers and difficulties and doubts and fears, let us turn to Mary. Let us think of Mary. Let us invoke Mary. Let her not be far from our mind, from our heart. And that we may enjoy her patronage, let us imitate her. Following her steps, we shall not go astray. If we pray to her, we shall not despair. Thinking of her, we shall not fall into error. If she upholds us, we shall not fall If she protects us, we shall not fear. And finally, with her guidance and help, we shall arrive safe and sound at the port of eternal salvation to which she will happily lead us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.